Today's tutorial is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to try to create something very simple for absolute beginners. And I'm also going to try to do it within 20 minutes. I'm going to have a timer at the bottom right corner that you can actually see how much of time is being skipped for rendering purposes or whatever it could be. But it's also going to be the first time that I'm creating this. So if at all there are any mistakes, you can actually see the thought process that goes on in my head as I correct them. We're going to be creating this particular animation that you see on screen right now, which should be a perfectly looping animation, but I haven't yet created it, so I don't know what it looks like. I'm going to just ensure that it is completely beginner friendly, and I'm going to go step by step so that anyone who's using Blender can definitely follow along. With that, let's go ahead and actually begin today's tutorial. The first thing that I'm going to do is actually start the timer down here so that you can see how much time has passed. The next thing is that it's going to be a geometry nodes tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and bring my cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window, and then switch this from the 3D viewport to the geometry node editor. Then I'll press this plus button to create a new geometry node tree, and I'll tap N to remove the side panel. Now, what I actually want to keep this super simple is just use a basic plane. So I'm going to select the group input and tap X to delete it. Now in geometry nodes, the plane is called a grid. So let's press shift A and search for the grid. Now I'm going to plug this grid into the group output. And there we have a small one by one grid. I want this to be a lot larger. So I'm just going to increase the size to maybe two cross two. And I could go higher, but I'll leave it at two cross two for now. The next thing is I'm going to increase the number of vertices to something very, very high so that we can actually displace it. So let's go ahead and make this 500 by 500. And in order to change both of these together, I'm actually pressing shift, click, and then dragging so that I can select both of them. And then changing one of them changes both of them together. So now I have 500 vertices. If we press tab to go into edit mode, you see the original cube that we have. So to actually visualize the density of the grid, I'm going to have to switch to wireframe view by pressing that. And now you can see that we have a very dense mesh. So that's just going to help ensure that it is shaded very, very smooth. So now to actually displace, we have to set the position of these individual vertices. So let's press shift A and search for set position and plug that in right over here. Now, the reason why we're using set position and not transform geometry is because transform geometry has round sockets, which means it works for the entire object as a whole, whereas set position has diamond sockets, which means it works for the individual vertices present within the actual geometry. If you want a detailed explanation of how to use geometry nodes, you definitely should watch this video over here and the next video that was uploaded with it so that you get a complete understanding and practical examples of geometry nodes as well, even if you're an absolute beginner. Now that we have this, let's actually offset this. So to offset it, let's press Shift A and search for a wave texture. So I just want one single texture that's going to make it very easily loopable as well. Now, if I was to just plug this color into the offset, you'll see we have something that looks very, very odd. So to first fix this, we're going to reduce the scale of this. So let's just reduce this scale until we get a nice little wave. And we are getting a wave. Let's change the scale to maybe 0 0.5. And that looks good. The next thing you see, it's moving for some reason towards the top right. And that's happening because the first thing is this color output is from 0 to 1. We don't want it to be from 0 to 1. We want it to be from minus 0 0.5 to plus 0 0.5. Let's press Shift A and search for a vector math node. Let's plug that in right over here. And let's subtract a value of 0 0.1 on all of the axes. It's actually going to be a value of 0 0.5 on all of the axes. The next thing that we need is to make this only go up and down on the Z axis. So for that, I'm just going to shift this over to the side, select this, press shift D, plug that in right over here and change this to multiply. And then I'm going to multiply this by a value of zero on both the X and the Y, but I'm going to make it a value of 0.5 on the Z axis. So we get it just like this, and that looks great. I think this is still too strong, so I'm going to reduce this to 0 point, maybe 0.25 instead of 0 0.5, and that looks good. Now I can actually increase the scale a little bit more. Let's make this a scale of 1, and that looks great. 
The next thing is I want to ensure that it is definitely shaded smooth. So I'm going to press Shift A, search for a set shade smooth and plug that in. So it's going to remain smooth no matter how close the camera goes. The next thing is I actually want this to be distorted. So let's go ahead and just increase this distortion till we get a nice interesting shape. Now, of course, maybe the scale is a little too large. Let's make this 0.5 again. And that looks good. Now let's select our camera and place the camera where we want it. So select it, press Alt G to clear its location, then Alt R to clear its rotation, and then press G, Z, and just bring it up till it's above the plane. Then you can go into the camera view by pressing this button, and that looks good. Now I am being distracted by everything outside. So with the camera selected, I'll go to the camera properties here, and then I can just see this viewport display option. Let's expand it and increase pass bar two all the way to one. Now this looks pretty good, but let's actually see what it looks like when it's rendered. Let's go ahead and switch to rendered view. And clearly that doesn't look good anymore. That's because firstly, we need to set a good material. So let's press shift and search for set material in the geometry nodes and plug it in right over here. And then let's select the default material itself. Now to actually play around with the material, let's switch this from the geometry node editor to the shader editor and then increase the metallic. And let's just increase the roughness or reduce it if you want more reflections. To see the reflections even better, let's go over to our render properties and switch on ray tracing. Now that immediately gives a very different look. Next, let's select the default light and press Alt G to clear its location that brings it right down over here. And then press G Z, just bring it up until we have it at a very nice position. The next thing is I actually don't want it to have such sharp edges. So I'm going to go to the lamp properties and then increase the radius so that we don't have those sharp edges anymore. Let's keep this radius at a value of one. Now let's just press GZ to move it higher. And I think that looks pretty good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to increase this power to something like 10,000 so that it becomes a lot brighter. Or actually, no, I'll just keep it at 1,000 itself. Now, the next thing that I want is to have some more texture to this particular material that we have. So to actually change the texture, let's press Shift A and search for maybe a noise texture. And then let's just plug this color into the roughness. Now, this actually looks good as is, but we can do a lot better. Let's press Shift A and search for a color ramp node and then plug this in right over there. Then let's bring this black in a little bit and let's bring this white in a little bit as well. Now I don't want the black to be very, very reflective. So let's increase the value to maybe a value of 0.1. And that should just ensure that there's no area that's completely reflective. Similarly, I don't want anything that is completely rough. Let's reduce this from a value of one to maybe a value of 0.8 and that should look good. So I think that looks pretty good as is already but we definitely have to animate this. To make this animated and nice, let's go over to our output properties. Let's make the resolution 200% so that it's a 4K render. Let's change the frame rate to 60 frames per second so that it is buttery smooth. Maybe I want this to be five seconds long, so I'll make this 300 frames long because if it goes at 60 frames per second, 300 frames results in 300 by 60, which is five seconds long. The output is going to be the same folder that I'm going to save this in. So it's just going to be a double slash and the file format. I'm going to choose FFmpeg video. The encoding I'm going to change from Matroska to MPEG4 with the output quality as perceptually lossless. Now that I have that set up, I can go ahead and play around with the final settings of the animation. For that, I'm going to switch this back to the geometry node editor and then let's go ahead and play around with this phase offset. Let's increase this timeline a little bit and then just zoom out using the scroll button. On frame zero, I'll go over the phase offset and just while hovering over it, tap I to insert a keyframe. If you don't see the keyframe down here, ensure that you actually select the wave texture and now you should be able to see the keyframe right over there. Then let's go over to the last frame, which is frame 300 and then go ahead and change phase offset to a value of two asterisks pi, which is two times pi, which is one full rotation of any wave or one full wavelength. 
which ensures that it's a perfect loop. Let's hover over it and tap I. Then let's go down here, tap A to select both the keyframes, and then you'll have to change the interpolation by tapping T and then choosing linear. The reason why we do this is if we use the default Bezier, then it's going to start off slow and then it's going to speed up in the middle and then it's going to end slowly as well, causing it to almost stop or in fact stop for a frame or two. Since we don't want this and we want this to be a smooth loop, we're going to tap T and then choose linear. So now that we have that done, you'll see that we get a smooth loop, but it's going to be going at a very slow frame rate. We want to see how fast this actually is moving. So I'm going to change this playback down here from play every frame to frame dropping. And now you'll see you get a realistic idea of how fast it's going to be moving. And maybe this looks a little too fast. So I might actually make this 600 frames long. And then I'm just going to go ahead, select this last keyframe, and then press G and move it by 300 frames. So now it becomes 10 seconds long and it becomes essentially twice as slow. So I think that looks pretty good, but we have to give it some sort of color. So to give it some color, let's select the light, go over to the light properties, and then let's change this color to give it a nice little color. I'm not going to keep it too saturated. So it's going to be desaturated itself, but what color could it be? Maybe let's just keep it at a default hue value of 0.5 itself because I really like that color. But to give the rest of it some more color, I'm actually going to select this and change this back to the shader editor. And let's change this base color to be completely bright. So a value of one, and then maybe change this to another color. So I'll go ahead and use maybe a similar hue. Let's just keep it a little less saturated. Maybe a saturation value of 0 0.4, a hue value of 0 0.5 itself. And that looks good. Now, if I just switch off overlays, you see these areas are fairly gray. Now, the reason this is gray is because the actual world background is gray. So if I was to change this to black, those would become black and that would give it its own cool look. And if I change this to white, they'll all become completely white, which will give it another different look. However, I don't actually want this to be black or white. I want every area to have some amount of color. So I'm going to actually give this a very low value. And then I'm going to make this a nice little saturated color. Let's change the saturation to maybe 0.6, Q value of 0.5 itself. And maybe the actual value will keep it very, very low. And that should look good. Or maybe let's give it a very high value because on this channel, I very rarely make bright textures. Maybe that looks good, but I'm not really a big fan of it. So I'm going to keep it low itself. Now, I think some more areas can be lit. So I'm going to select the light and just press G, Z and bring it down a little bit. So you can see just by placing the light in different regions, you get very different effects. Maybe I'll keep the light where it was. And over here in geometry nodes, let's switch this over to geometry nodes. Let's actually just reduce this from 0 0.025 to 0 0.1 so that the bumps are a lot lesser. Then let's select the light and press GZ and just bring it down to right about there. I think that looks very, very interesting. So a little lower and I think that placement is good. So now that I have a placement that I actually like, I like the amount of lines that are coming in because of the noise texture, I actually want to play around with the compositing. So let's switch this little arrow and enable the compositor in the camera view. Then let's switch this over to the compositor and then let's click use nodes. Now let's press shift A and then search for the bloom effect and then just plug this in. Now you should have a little bit of bloom that just makes this look a lot nicer. Now, since I still have five minutes remaining, I can actually play around with this a little bit more. Or since I'm already happy with the way this looks, I can actually go ahead and press render animation. So this took about 15 minutes. Hopefully the tutorial will be a lot shorter with me removing all of the areas where I stammer and the areas where it just took a little bit of time for Blender to load. 
However, you got to see exactly how much of time was skipped as well. And hopefully you learned something cool from this particular video. I will be creating a few more tutorials, but in the meantime, I am working on a short film that I will be releasing on this channel. Hopefully that will release after a month at most, but I'm really looking forward to it. And I really like the tiny, tiny bit of progress that I've made so far. This particular month has a lot of things planned out for it. So it's going to definitely be a very heavy month. If you're new to this channel, be sure to check out all of my other tutorials because I post a lot of sci-fi tutorials as well as demystifying videos as well. A lot more deep dives and demystifying videos along with complete courses on various animation topics will be releasing on this channel very, very soon, right after the short film. So definitely stay tuned for that. Until those come out, thank you so much for watching. Keep creating and don't forget to stay creative.